Hi guys, and welcome back to More Than Cars, and welcome to my temporary office. This is actually based at Project 2, and currently in the cafe. Um, everybody else is out, so excuse the echoey noise. We're actually waiting for furniture to be delivered today to set the guys up uh, with some workstations so that they can uh, actually do some work. But today's video is a debrief of, I think, Helicopter Lesson 13 and 14. I've not checked, actually, so the title is right. Uh, I might be wrong because I've not actually checked and I've uh, lost a little bit of count. So um, if you watched yesterday's video, I was actually genuinely quite pleased with this lesson. Reviewing the footage, I'm not quite sure I'm as pleased because it did look a little bit wobbly at times, but um, I think that was the wind. It was reasonably windy yesterday, even though it, was, it wasn't it was gusting or anything, but it was in a, a, a straight direction. But I, I was quite pleased with this at the time. It had been a week's gap and um, I think I did fairly well. My feet are certainly getting more active. Um, what is good, that is a positive thing. I've always said if I sort my feet out, I think the rest will follow. The, everything else is slightly coming into muscle memory now, even remembering to do the checks, um, checking temperatures, car beat, pulling car beat when required. Um, it's becoming slightly more natural. Um, but the, the my feet, because it's such a disparity between the tiny little movement here and the tiny little movement here, your feet at times in the wind are like... <laughs> <laughs> like this. It's, it's really weird having to do so little controls on these and then so much on another and then at other times it's so little again. It's um, it's just getting used to it as, as with everything. But I am... Um, if Joe let me go off on my own tomorrow, I think I would be more than happy or shall I say confident that I could take it off, land it. Not doing all the radio bits. I haven't actually done that, especially with East Midlands traffic yet, but I would be confident. Anyway, enough jabbering. Um, let's get on to the first clip. Uh, I'm really sorry, the, the, my fancy little cable that is meant to record my voice and Joe's voice didn't seem to work in this um, at all. So um, you can hear the helicopter very quietly. You can't hear me, so I'm gonna have to talk you through what is happening. So um, we're in this lesson, we are practicing um, effectively stalling the helicopter. Um, it's, I can't remember its terminology now, but basically you are physically stalling the blades of the helicopter. And in an R22, it's actually reasonably difficult to get into this situation, but it's effectively the downwash of the own helicopter. So the air, the recirculation of dirty air, and I use dirty air not in the sense of that it's got bits in it, but uh, effectively tumbling air, not consistently smooth. So to achieve this or get into this situation, the helicopter has to be going less than 30 knots uh, and descending more than 300 feet per minute. So not over, and actually using power. So the, the helicopter is actually trying to, 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 to carry on or climb or whatever, but actually using power. It has to, has to be using power to recirculate. And you get wingtip vortices on the edge, uh, and effectively that spreads across the blade and stalls. The, the, the blade don't actually produce lift anymore. So um, in this clip, Joe is actually trying to get the helicopter into this situation. And I'm hoping the audio is actually picking this up. The blades sound like, it sounds, uh, the best way I can describe it is vibration and like a tuk, 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 tuk noise as they're kind of like biting bits of air but not really biting the air um, and effectively the result of this is you start sinking quicker because more power a pilot attempts to pull um, the worse the situation gets the bigger the stall so the way to get out of this you simply push forward into cleaner air or gain the airspeed back to above 30 and effectively you then in clean air and the helicopter can fly again, you are producing lift. So that little clip there was Joe attempting to get in. Now we didn't really get into the situation um, and Joe actually hands the controls over to me now to have a go at getting into this situation. It's really difficult and very, the helicopter doesn't sound happy, that's the best way I can describe it. But the point of this is sometimes if you were coming so if you imagine you're trying to land and wind's blowing into wind the wash is going away from you and what's fine but if you're trying to land with the wind behind you what you should never do joe's really insistent and trying to ingrain in your mind that you should never do this the the wash of the helicopter will actually be in the forward direction so you could end up getting into this situation where um, you effectively stall the aircraft at very low altitude and there isn't a great deal to be able to do to get out of it because obviously you have to push forward 
gain airspeed out and go around again. But obviously, if you've got things in your way, you might not be able to do that. So it's important that you learn the situation, learn what it feels, sounds like. And if it doesn't sound right and feel right, uh, and you are within those boundaries of what could be uh, possibly uh, creating this situation, you, you need to um, get out of it and stop flying in that direction and put, point it into wind and um, be a bit more sensible. It's, it's about understanding what could happen, why it's happening, and making sure that you're flying within um, an aspect of basically not not getting yourself into this situation is the best way of avoiding um, this. Not a great deal to see in this clip because it's quite hard to see. If you look at the uh, needle top left on the instrument on the like four dials, you can see the descent rate increasing and I've just nosed it forward now and Joe helping me, but that actually um, effectively builds airspeed again once the third dial uh, on, on the top row um, back up again and we, we climb, climb away. So it's interesting to practice it but um, hopefully something that I never physically experience um, when I start flying on my own. This next clip is showing us um, basically practicing an engine off in a hover. So this would mean rolling the throttle off. Uh, what is just about to happen... Wait for it. Wait for it. Now, and it's about gently raising the collective to just bring the helicopter down to a settled landing. So it's it's just practicing an eventuality. You've obviously seen us do an auto rotation in previous videos from way up high if the engine fails, but this is practicing what to do if the engine fails. Um, basically close to the ground. So this um, this is a particularly easy um, uh, easy thing to do. Actually, it's just remembering a little bit of right pedal because you've no longer got the torque of the engine and just gradually raising collective. And one of the things um, I didn't actually kind of twig uh, later, that collective can actually go a lot higher than I've ever been used to uh, pulling it. So a little bit weird to, um, to do it, but we're going to do it again now. So I think Joe's going to do it. And is he going to do it? Is he turning the engine off? And there we go. So it's it, it's it's very um, it's weird, but fairly easy. The next exercise we go and do um, in a second will be the same process, but if we were taxiing. Um, actually, I'm going to leave this bit in because I think Joe shows us an instant engine off, say if the engine exploded. Obviously, this is a piston engine, so like a car engine, they don't tend to just die or explode. They um, And he just did it there. But, um, but they actually tend to die off slowly, so it's actually quite a, an easy and slow thing. You can hear the engine not quite being right or dying off and just gradually bring it to the ground and lift collective, so to cushion that landing. But Joe just demonstrated a um, snap engine off there where it instantly rolls off the throttle and you have to react quite quickly. I mean in piston engine that's not likely to happen unless the thing explodes and that's very unlikely to happen. Anyway let's, uh, oh no sorry that was the um, emergency one there with a very quick engine off. I think he was just demonstrating it before. It's really hard to tell what's going on because obviously not a lot looks like it's happening. We're only going off probably three or four foot and then killing the engine and coming gently back down. So uh, it looks far more, with the GoPro, it obviously smooths out all this slight vibration. So it, um, it looks very, very sedate on the video, but it's a little bit more bumpy and exciting than this in real life. Um, anyway, let's cut this here and show you the same thing, but in a um, forward flight taxi. I'm gonna try and be in time with this one. So I've lifted it up into a hover um, and then we start taxiing um, forward. One thing I have got to get used to is I need to be slightly higher in my hovers. Joe really wants me to be a, bit, a little bit higher. Um, so we're taxiing forward and we're going to kill the engine. Wait for him to kill the engine. Uh, there we go. So we and we kind of skid forward. Now I do ask the question of why um, we don't just instantly put the collective back down. So you carry on, like you keep it up. Uh, and uh, the explanation for that is obviously if you're going forward, you don't want to instantly stop because then you could go Whoa, or catch the front skid. So it's important to keep that collective and gradually let the, the aircraft settle into that, um, it settle into the ground while skidding on the skids. That's what the skids, why the skids are called skids. And there you go, Joe just demonstrates it. It's, uh, that was me asking, why don't we do it? And it's a little bit more like jolty and bumpy. It's all about being smooth and maintaining. Uh, 
um, basically maintaining control and allowing it to gently come to the ground. Very similar to the um, engine off just in the hover. The, you pull collective to gently bring the aircraft back down, not, um, not jolt it around. Let's stop this now. Let's get the camera rolling so you can uh, <laughs> kind of understand what's happening. So we've just done a little 360 round and those are, are getting better. Um, we're gonna do a circuit now. So it's all about practicing circuits because obviously this is the first solo element I'll end up doing other than obviously just taking it off and putting that down again. Um, you do a radio call, um, you then check your T's and P's, lean the aircraft forward, um, keep pushing, keep pushing forwards to keep that attitude going, building up to 45 knots and then um, raising collective and slightly bringing the aft stick back. And as you can see, Joe immediately comes off. Well, he didn't even touch the controls there. I was quite, I was quite pleased. I actually seem to have done that quite well. And um, it's now important that we roll ever so slightly left. And he's just pointed out the, um, there's a tower block in Nottingham City where we kind of point and aim at. Basically, we make sure that we don't cross an active runway. Obviously, we land on the grass, airplanes will land on the concrete or with the I believe they can actually land on the grass. Um, Joe's just done a radio call there um, only because the tower actually let us know that we were um, well, I think it was going for a tea break actually because it's not technically an airfield that um, has to have um, somebody on the on that um, airway all the time. So this is a circuit path that, pattern that I'd not done before and actually today's lesson is I believe learning all the different circuit patterns because if I go up on my solo and then they suddenly change which runway they're using I need to know and understand all the different patterns all the little points you look out for to make sure that you're, you're doing it correctly. So we effectively go up to the road, we turn left, uh, we roll quite tight left again so it's more rather than a 90 straight 90 it's more of like a 180 at this first turning and we do this to try and avoid flying over people's houses because you can imagine farmers living close by we, we're just we're trying to be sensible and um, not actually flying over people's houses because they are noisy machines so that's why we go along here this is now called the downwind leg um, because obviously it's up, we're flying kind of with the wind now. So you do a radio call and my call would be helicopter Oscar November downwind. Um, we then wait a little bit further along. So you've had, I don't know if you can make out, but effectively where the, um, the compass is right at the top, there's kind of a road that goes into the houses. We aim for that to turn slightly before that, um, basically over the fields, not over the clump of houses on the right and the clump of houses on the left. We then fly over the solar panels. Um, so let's wait a bit. It is, it is really enjoyable actually flying. Uh, and learning this. It's been a challenge and it is also a challenge to learn the material required to pass the ground exams. I've, I've read three books in the space of about four days at the moment to really try and cram for my next next exam because I do want to pass all of this as, as soon as possible. So as you can see I'm rolling left before the houses and we go over the two fields avoiding the building on the Left, we fly over, and it look it feels so much slower when I'm talking through this compared to in the aircraft. You really don't feel you have much time. Um, on sorry, I should have also said on the downwind leg, we actually do a Frida Fridat check. So that's uh, fuel, radio, um, engine. So we pull car beat at that time, direction and altitude. Um, basically, it's getting in a good habit to check your T's and P's. Like I said, we're rolling now left over the solar panels coming, lining ourselves up with the runway again to come into land. And I will show you um, the whole process because I think, it's, I think it's quite interesting and I'm reasonably pleased with myself that I am now getting it closer to one point. I do tend to still miss my exact spot in a perfectly smooth, so say my spots here, if I was trying to do it perfectly smooth like this, I am either ending slightly short and having to extend it slightly, but I'm not, I'm not ending long, I'm not overshooting, but I am tending to land short because that picture of, uh, I think he said once, keep it between the GPS and the compass, I'm not, at some point you have to lower that to obviously land over the bit that you're aiming at. And I don't seem to time that perfectly to get it as a perfect transition rather than, he says I'm very happy and he's perfectly happy with what I'm doing, but you know, I like to be uh, perfect. So I asked the question of when should I stop bringing that picture or that you know spot down in the windscreen and he even admits it's, it's not really a when and you can't say like 500 foot away, it really depends on the wind conditions and it doesn't 
necessarily have to be the same every time. As long as you do it at some point, uh, it, it's fine. So it's, I suppose it's just something, I, I think I'm trying to be overly perfect or overly like this is exactly how you need to do it every time rather than just flying it and doing it. So you can see obviously we're aiming for the spot in the center and you can see from, the camera is ironically more or less exactly at my eye line. I've got that spot bang in between the compass and the GPS. And, and at some point I need to let it slowly come down the window to make sure that I land over it. But obviously you are slowing down and dropping quicker. So I, I need to, I think I need to put a little bit more power in earlier to make sure that I keep going and then coming down. But you know, for what, this might be my 10th landing now, probably not even that. I'm pretty happy with that. If I really wanted to, I could obviously push forward, but I'm trying to do that perfect, like perfect descent rather than going there and then going forward a bit, then down. I'm just trying to do it perfectly. So anyway, I think we actually um, come to a landing at this point. I can't remember. Um, it it's feels so much quicker in that. Anyway, let's stop that because I think I only do this probably three or four times more because the, the demonstrations used a fair amount of fuel and do come down to landing. My landings are not not as perfect as I'd like them to be. I kind of push through it rather than smoothly landing. Well, I, I think I need to judge height a little bit better, but I'm, I'm sure it'll come. That was my lesson done for today. I, I'm, as I said at the beginning, I'm genuinely quite pleased with how that one went. Um, I feel I am progressing now, and I think actually having a little week off actually allowed my brain to process some of the things I'd learned. And um, I am getting a little, little bit better, and actually the GoPro did cut out. I would have showed you the landing I did at Costock. Um, not the approach Joe took because I've not never done that way in before especially with that wind direction and actually as you come in rather than like I'm doing that perfectly into wind and then just stopping um, you have to come in like crosswind and then swing it around at the last minute to come down what I've never done before so um, hopefully Joe lets me have a go at that because that looks uh, fairly fun actually coming in and kind of swinging you feel like a helicopter pilot you always see them come in swing around and land um but uh yeah i'm sure he'll let me have a go soon at that but um yeah it was quite good i'm as i said genuinely pleased with this i feel my turns are getting better i'm feeling a little bit more confident in it and um, i think i just need to practice my landings a little bit more but hovering's coming on better i'm holding the position better i really did make an effort today um, or yesterday in not trying to drift and even in the windy conditions that i had I, I felt i was on top of that a little bit better um so yeah anyway if you are enjoying this content please do get in the comments below if you've got any questions for myself or joe get them down below i will pass them on and he does watch these so hi joe um so yeah, thumbs up if you enjoy this content. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please do so. As I've always said, it is helping if this thing grow and uh, growing this really car community, even though obviously we've kind of started helicopter community out there as well. So anyway, thank you very much. And I'll see you again tomorrow for another silly video. Bye guys, take care.